Please, a remedy has immediately presented itself. Don't worry, for if you do as I tell you, you will get back your gold this very day. The man said, What am I to do? He said, Go at once to a certain quarter of the city, where there is a mosque with a minaret. Beside the mosque is a gate, and behind the gate is a shop. There is an old man sitting there, wearing ragged clothes and sewing canvas. One or two boys are also doing some sewing with him. Go into that shop and greet the old man. Sit down in front of him and tell him your story. When you have attained your object, remember me in your prayers. Do what I have told you without delay. The man came out of the mosque. He thought to himself, Fancy, I appealed to all the nobles and emirs, and they earnestly pleaded on my behalf, but it was of no use. Now this beggar is directing me to a feeble old man, and saying that I shall obtain my object from him. This seems to me like a trick, but what am I to do? At all events, I will go, even if no good comes of it. Things will not be any worse than they are at present. So he went to the gate and the mosque, entered the shop, and saluting the old man, sat down in front of him. Some time passed, as the old man was doing some sewing. <laughs> some sewing. After putting it down, he said, is there anything I can do for you? The man told him his story from first to last. After hearing him, after hearing all the circumstances, the old tailor said, It is God to him, be power and glory, who orders the affairs of his servants. We can do no more than speak. So let me also speak to your debtor on your behalf. I hope that God will put things right, and you will get what you want. Sit with your back to that wall, and rest a while. Then he said to one of his apprentices, Put down your needle, and go to the house of such and such a mirror. Sit outside the door of his private room, and if anyone goes in our or comes out, ask them to tell the emir that a certain tailor, apprentice, is waiting and has a message for him. When he calls you in, after greeting him, say, Mas My master sends his compliments and says that a man has come to him to complain against you. He has a receipt signed by you for seven hundred dinars, and it is now eighteen months after the due date. I request you forthwith to give the man his money in full, and satisfy him completely without fail or delay. Bring me back his answer quickly. The boy went in haste to the emir's house, while I was dumbstruck with amazement, for no king would send his own slave such a message as the tailor had just sent to the emir through the medium of a boy. After some time the boy came back and said to his master, I did as you said. I saw the emir and delivered the message. The emir got up and said, Convey my greetings and respect to your master and tell him that I thank him. I will do as he says. I am now coming, bringing the money with me. I shall apologize for my fault and hand over the money in his presence. An hour had not passed when the emir was on his way with a groom and two attendants. He dismounted from his horse, entered the shop, and greeted the old tailor, kissing his hand. Then he sat down in front of him, took a purse of gold from an attendant, and said, Here is the gold. Please do not think that I was going to misappropriate this man's money. What happened was not my fault, but my steward's. He apologized profusely, then said, to his attendant, go and fetch an assayer with a balance from the bazaar. 
he went and brought an assayer. The gold was assayed and weighed. It came to five hundred caliphal dinars. The emir said, You will have to take these five hundred dinars today, and tomorrow, when I return from the court, I will summon him, and, tomorrow, and hand over the other two hundred dinars, asking pardon and trying to satisfy him. And I will arrange for an ecomiast to call on you tomorrow before the noon prayer. The old man said, Put these five hundred dinars into his skirt, and see that you do not go back on your word. He said, Very well. He put the money into my skirt, kissed the old man's hand, and departed. I put out my hand, took hold of the balance, and weighed out a hundred dinars. I laid them before the old man. He said, What is this? I said, I was prepared to take back a hundred dinars less than the full amount. Now that, through your good offices, I am going to receive my f money in full, I freely grant you these hundred dinars as a reward for your effort. The old man looked cross and frowned, saying, I am content that as a result of what I said, a Muslim found release from grief and trouble. But if I allowed myself to take one grain of your money, I should be a worse oppressor than this Turk. Arise and go in safety with the gold you have got. And if he does not send you the other two hundred dinars tomorrow, let me know. Hereafter you had better know who your associates are before you do business with them. In spite of all my entreaties, he would accept nothing. So I got up and went joyfully back to my house. That night I slept free from care. The next day I was sitting in the house, and about the middle of the morning someone came from the emir to see me and said, The emir asks you to trouble yourself to visit him for a moment. I went to the emir's house. When I went in, he rose and put me in a seat of honour. Then he began to revile his steward, saying that they were to blame, and that he had been constantly busy in the service of the king. Then he said to his treasurer, Bring the purse and the balance. He weighed out two hundred dinars and put them in my hands. I bowed and got up to go. He said, Sit down for a bit. Food was brought in. When he had finished eating and washed our hands, when we, the emir whispered something in his servant's ear. The servant went out and came back, with a robe of honour. The emir said, Invest him. So they invested me with a cloak of great peace, price, and put a turman of fine linen on my head. Then the emir said to me, Are you now genuinely satisfied? I said, Yes. <laughs> he said, Then give me back my receipt, and go this very hour to the old man, and tell him that you have received your rights and obtain satisfaction from me. I said, certainly. And in any case, he told me to report to him tomorrow. I rose and went from the emir's house to the tailor's shop. I told him what had happened, how the emir had called me, and treated me well, and put me the rest of my money, and presented me with the cloak and turban. I said, I know that all this has come about through your good offices. How would it be if you accepted two hundred dinars from me? Whatever I said, he would not take a single thing. So I got up and returned in good spirits to my own shop. The next day I roasted a lamb and a few chickens, and took them with a plate of sweets and pastries to the old tailor. I said, O oh, Shaykh! If you will not take my money, please accept these few eatables, with my best wishes. It is all from my legitimate earnings. I shall be very pleased, if you will. He said, I accept. 
He put out his hand and ate some of the food and gave some, of the, some to his apprentices. Then I said to him, I have one request to make, if you will permit me. He said, What is it? I said, All the nobles and emirs of Baghdad spoke to this emir on my behalf, and all without avail. He listened to nobody. Even the judge was powerless to deal with him. Why did he listen to you and do what you said at once and give me the money? How did he come to have such respect for you? Please tell me, he said. Haven't you heard what happened to me with the commander of the faithful? I said, no, he said. Listen, and I will tell you. He began. Know that I have proclaimed the hours of prayer from the minaret of this mosque for thirty years. I am a tailor by trade. I have never drunk wine, never indulged in adultery and sodomy, and never approved of improper acts. Now in this street is the house of an emir. One day after the afternoon prayer, I left the mosque to come back to this shop. I saw the emir coming along in a drunken state, holding on to a young woman's veil. He was dragging her by force, and she was crying for help and saying, Oh, Muslims, rescue me! I am not a woman of this sort. I am the daughter of such and such, and the wife of such and such, and my house is in a certain quarter. Everyone knows of my chastity and virtue. This Turk is presumptuously and forcibly carrying me off with mischievous intent. Moreover, my husband has sworn to divorce me if I am ever away from the house at night. She was weeping, and nobody went to her assistance. For this emir was too proud and tyrannous. He had a ten thousand horsemen, and nobody dared say anything to him. I shouted a bit, but it was useless, and he took the woman to his house. Thus frustrated, my religious ardour was kindled, and I could not restrain myself. I went and rallied the elders of the district, and he, we all went to the emir's house, and raised clamorous protests, shouting, Islam is no more, for in the city of Baghdad, on the caliph's doorstep, women are presumptuously and forcibly seized in the street, carried off and raped. If you send this woman outside, well and good, but if, you, if not, we shall go at once to al Mutasim's court and complain. When the Turk heard our noise, he came out of his house, with a parrot party of pages, who beat us well and truly, and broke our resistance. When this happened, we all fled and dispersed. It was the time of the evening prayer. I prayed. Later on I got into my night clothes, lay down upon the ground. I was so vexed and roused that I could not sleep. I lay awake half the night, thinking, and then it occurred to me that if any mischief was going to be done, it would have happened by now and could not be helped. What made it worse was that the woman's husband had sworn to divorce her if she went out at night. I'd heard that when wine bibbers get drunk they fall asleep, and when they wake up they do not know how much of the night has passed, I decided immediately to go up to the minaret and utter the call to prayer. When the Turk heard it, he would think it was daybreak. He would let go of the woman and send her out of his house. Inevitably, she would pass the door of this mosque. Having sounded the call to prayer, I would quickly come down from the minaret and stand at the door of the mosque. When the woman appeared, I would escort her back to her husband's house. So then, at least the poor wretch 
would not forfeit her husband and her matronage. So I did all this. I went up to the minaret and uttered the call to prayer. Now the commander of the faithful Al-Mutasim Al was awake. Maybe Al-Mutasim. When he heard the call to prayer at the wrong time, he was very angry and said, A man who sounds the call to prayer in the middle of the night is a miscreant. For whoever hears it will think it is daytime. Maybe he's a drunk too. And as soon as he goes out into the street, he will be caught by the night watch and get into trouble. He said to a servant, Go and tell the porter, and I want him to go at once and bring the muezzin, who has sounded the call to prayer in the middle of the night. I shall punish him so severely that no muezzin will again utter the call to prayer at the wrong time. I was standing at the door of the mosque, waiting for this woman, when I saw the porter coming with a torch. When he saw me standing there, he said, Did you sound the call to prayer? I said, yes. He said, why did you sound the call to prayer? I said, why did you sound it at the wrong time? The caliph has taken extreme exception to it and is very angry with you. He has sent me to find you so that he can punish you. I said, it is for the caliph to command, but... A certain barbarian forced me to utter the call to prayer at the wrong time. He said, Who is this barbarian? I said, One who fears neither God nor the caliph. He said, Who could that be? I said, This is a matter which I can only tell to the commander of the faithful. If I did this with evil intent whatsoever, whatever, puni punishment... The, uh, whatever the punishment the caliph gives me will be less than my deserts. He said, in the name of Allah, come, let us go to the caliph's palace. The servant was waiting for us when, he reached, when we reached the palace. The porter repeated to the servant what he had told him. The servant went and told Al-Mutasim. He said, go and bring the man to me. The servant took me before the caliph. He asked me why I had sounded the call to prayer at the wrong time. I then told him the story of the Turk and the woman from the start to finish. On hearing it, he was very disturbed. He told the servant to instruct the porter as follows. Go with a hundred horsemen to the house of such and such Amir, and tell him that he is summoned by the caliph. Having found him, you are to rescue the woman whom he brought to the house yesterday and send her to her husband's house with this old man and two or three lackeys. Call the husband to the door and say that Al-Mutasim sends his greetings and wishes to intercede on a woman's behalf and says that she was not at all at fault in what happened. He ought to look after his wife better in future. And then bring the emir 